Yeah, but that, that's why I love wholesaling because it, it, it teaches you marketing, teaches yeah. you sales, it teaches you about the market, what's working, what's not. You know, when uh, a lot of people, they want to start with flipping because I get it, it's sexy. That, you know, they say, well, you can make a lot of money with flipping. You can make a lot of money with anything that you're good at. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just that flipping is sexy. So they start with that. And then, hey, uh, I lost my ass on this. And I'm like, what a shocker. You bought in the wrong area, over-improved, hired the wrong contractors, took too long. Yeah. And now you're on the water on the deal, you know? And I see that so many times. Yeah. And, and it's like when you start with wholesaling, you get to learn who the investors are, what strategies are working, what part of the market people flip, what part of the market people hold houses, what part of in San Antonio is a lot of owner finance, what section of the market they're doing on finance. You get such a massive understanding of the market in such a short period of time. Yeah. You know, flipping, it will take you forever to get that. Mm -hmm. And in a year of wholesaling, you can understand like, I know all of St. Louis or I know all of San Antonio. Yeah. So to stay on a, a similar theme there, like where to get started in real estate investing, um, whether, you know, a lot of people, you know, building wealth and rentals, like long-term play, like that's a, it's a lot of people's goals, I would say. But, um, I always like starting in either wholesaling or fix and flipping and getting a few deals under your belt, regardless if you got a good income or not. Right. Um, uh, so kind of a couple funnels, and I want to get your feedback on this, mm -hmm. that I talk to people because, um, and I want you to like pick holes in this for me. But um, wh what I t tell students is um, I, I almost put it in like a like a personality funnel, uh -huh. like where like wholesalers more um, sales and marketing focused in personality and skill sets. And then fix and flippers, especially if you got the, uh, credit and income from like a W-2 job. Uh, if you're like an engineer, finance and operations type, maybe fix and flipping is the best place to start for you versus wholesaling. What, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think that's uh, a very deep way of looking at it and it makes sense. Uh, I look at it with my business partner, John Barr. So he is the fix and flip person. Yeah. He is more analytical. He is more about the numbers. He hates the people, you know, <laughs> that whole marketing. I'm great with the marketing and the people, yeah, yeah, right? So I always gravitated towards that because it was easy for me, you know? And he always gravitated towards the fix and flip. Yeah. That being said, sometimes if you can't find a partner, you know, like you got to suck it up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you may not like wholesaling, but you can do it. Yeah, you for sure. You can still get it done. Yeah. You're not probably going to be a superstar wholesaler. Yeah. But you'll do enough, you'll do well enough to get your own deals, yeah. to get your own stuff going. But yeah, I think uh, wholesaling is definitely, I, I've met some people that I have told them, I was like, look, either get a partner or go get a job because like you're terrible. <laughs> like you're, you're just bad at this. You know, they have terrible personality. They yeah. get offended quickly. You know, they curse out sellers or, or yeah. they don't have the patience. I'm like, bro, it's, you're just going to keep struggling. Yeah. Like either get a partner that can do this or just do something else. This yeah. is not for you. Yeah, I like that. I, I think it all comes down to, you know, knowing your market, learning how to analyze a deal, and creating deal flow. Whether you're a fixer, flipper, or a wholesaler, you got to have some sort of acquisitions funnel of some sort. Um, all right, so getting back to to your journey a little bit, it, it will. Uh, um, so you, you you canceled that contract, and then what did it look like as far as your education and some tactful things you did to. Uh, go into your first real estate investment deal after that first deal you canceled. So after that first deal I canceled, it took me three years. Oh, man. Before I got my next deal. Um, I was in New York at the time. So still in New York. And yeah, well, and that's when I was like, all right, New York sucks, right? It's not business friendly. It's a blue state. Um, it's just, we have a company. My brother had a company, a construction company, and we, you know, you wouldn't keep the majority of the profit you made, right? Because it was workers' comp, insurances, all this shit. It was like 60%, 70% yeah. was going to the government right off the bat, right? So it, it was it was very difficult. And then at the time, real estate, because of the financial crisis, the banks had a lot of ghost inventory, which they just had. They were holding on to houses that were vacant, but they didn't want to release them into the market because they didn't want home prices to drop. Mm -hmm. So there was these vacant houses that were just deteriorating and the banks were not selling them. They were just not letting them go. And so what happens is home prices were really high. Rents were really low. Taxes were really high. 
So it's like it was a terrible investment market. Yeah. You could not rent. You know, you weren't cash flowing on anything. No. So I, I, so I was like, I we gotta, I gotta get out of New York. So I started doing some research. I was like, what state survived the financial crisis? And I saw Texas. Mm. And I was like, well, Texas is cool. Like yeah. they have that kind of attitude of like, yeah. you know, come and take it kind of thing. So I was like, I like that. And I looked at Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio. And when I did the market research for each one, I saw like Dallas and Austin were very hot, very competitive. Yeah. And I saw San Antonio was like kind of lukewarm. And I was like, well, you know, my logic was it's going to eventually gravitate, right? Yeah. Like people are going to go to San Antonio because it's affordable. So we packed up the car, moved down to Texas, landed in San Antonio. And that's when I started like networking again, working with people. And I was trying to do it on my own. I had that ego of like, you know, I can do this. I read this book and this hillbilly <laughs> from like Idaho was killing it. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm smarter than him. I can do this. And no offense to anybody from Idaho. <laughs> or any hillbillies. Or any hillbillies. Yeah. You guys are awesome. <laughs> but but that's how, that was my ego, right? It was my ego saying like, I, I'm better. I can do yeah. this. And I spent over a year in Texas and it was like nothing. I was losing out every single contract I would put out. I would, no offers were getting accepted. And I just, I out of just desperation, I put out a post on one of the forums in San Antonio. And I was like, hey, I'm boots on the ground here. I speak Spanish. I, I, I know construction. And I'm willing to work for whatever. Like, I just, I, I want to learn real estate. Who, who can help? And then this investors out of Austin, they're like, hey, we need boots on the ground in San Antonio. And I was like, yeah, as long as you're willing to teach me. They're like, yeah, we'll give you 20% of whatever we make. I was like, shit. Cool. Yeah. That even works, right? Yeah. I wasn't even expecting to get paid. So I started, they started teaching me what one of the mistakes I was making. And this is why I say contractors are terrible investors is because as a contractor, I will go into the house and be like, it needs new trim, new doors, new cabinets, new everything. But as an investor, it's like, no, we're just going to paint that. Yeah. We're going to keep this, you know, in this area doesn't make sense. So that's why I wasn't getting any offers accepted. I was looking at it as a contractor. Just over uh, overestimating your rehab. A, greatly. I mean, yeah. all my budgets were like redoing the whole house. Yeah. Right? And when I when you look at it as an investor, it's like, what do the comps say? Yeah. I didn't know that. You know, nobody was teaching me that. Yeah. That's like, you when you renovate, when you do anything, you look at what the comps are, and that's what you do. Yeah. So that's, I didn't know. And then the investor taught me how to like look at a property that way. And I was like, then I started like reflecting back on all the deals. I was like, yeah, I love both the shit out yeah. of everybody. Imagine if we got one though. Oh, what? Yeah, what the, deep. yeah. Oh, it would have yeah. been a home run at that yeah. point. But yeah, I didn't get any of those times. Yeah. And I started working with them and they were, they taught me everything about like foreclosure marketing because it was big at that time in San Antonio. Uh, subject twos, that's yeah. the primary what we did with foreclosures are great for sub twos, right? Because uh, you, you can reinstate the loan, take over the financing. Yeah. Um, so we started doing all that and they were kind of screwing me on my 20%. What they would do is like, they would wholesale a deal. Then they would take out all of their expenses, yeah. all of their people, all of their stuff. And then what was left, they'd give me like a $300 check. And yeah. I'm like, but we wholesaled this for like 20. Yeah. Like, how am I getting 300? Well, we have expenses here and there. I was like, it's cool, man. Just teach me. Yeah. You know? And funny enough, karma, whatever. I'm in business. They're not. Yeah. You know, and the table <laughs> kind of goes around. And, uh, but I learned everything about, you know, subject to uh, closing deals, contracting, analyzing yeah. deals. So it, it really prepared me to go off on my own. Yeah, that's great. We talk about what, what was your role there? What would you like, job title? I guess, uh, I will guess it like lead manager, okay. acquisition manager kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. We, and we talk about like, ways to go full time and yeah. steps to go full time because that's that's a big big thing right and and I love it because um it's what I did and I'm passionate about making real estate um not only a good investment but a, a, a business um so one of the main options that we've done I've done Brian Schroeder done has done is uh take a job within the real estate or real estate investing industry mm -hmm. with a with a reputable company, so you can you can learn the ropes. You can learn so much in a short period of time. Then so much more than you would be just you know watching podcasts and reading books. Just the education is supercharged. So that's really cool that you did that. Yeah, and I think what matters is like when I got started, what was different 
is you didn't have the amount of options you have now to like take a job with somebody and that but you do now right and you also didn't have the amount of education that you do now so where i think the advantage for me was is that i wasn't overloaded with information where i see people nowadays is they have too many options yeah and it becomes overwhelming yeah and they don't know which way to go yeah and they're like well this guy's preaching this and this guy's preaching that and this guy's doing this and this guy starts to buy that and i'm like yeah, you kind of got to just jump in, yeah. you know, because like they're all right, because if it works for them, it works for them. Yeah, right. Doesn't mean it's right for you, though. Exactly. The thing is, like, you got to figure out what do you want to do? Yeah. And I think that all starts with marketing and acquisitions and getting the yes. deal. And then you have all of those options at your fingertips. Yeah. And, and that's why, like, I, I, I learned that, that, you know, that if you can generate your own deals, your your chances of screwing up, you know, go down tremendously yeah. because it's like you have so much margin yeah at that point that's like what do you want to do do you want to wholesale it do you want to flip it do yep. you want to keep it yeah what do you want to do subject right? to it subject to, yeah. yeah i mean there's a million things you can do now yeah. because you you negotiated such a great deal yeah you know so yeah that's why it's definitely that 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 path is the one i definitely recommend to everybody very cool